Today we're diving into the fascinating and complex story of Quebec's independence movement. We'll explore the history, the key events during the two referendum, and what could have happened if the results had been different. Ready? Let's get started. Quebec, one of Canada's most distinct provinces, has a long history of seeking greater autonomy and, at times, complete independence. The roots of this movement can be traced back to cultural, linguistic, and political differences between Quebec and the rest of Canada. The desire for independence gained significant momentum in the 1960s during the Quiet Revolution, a period of intense socio-political and cultural change in Quebec. This era saw the rise of the Parti Québécois, also known as the PQ. It's a political party which was dedicated to Quebec sovereignty. The Quiet Revolution was marked by the secularization of society, economic modernization, and the rise of a new Quebec nationalism. The provincial government took control of areas previously dominated by the Catholic Church, such as education and healthcare. This fostered a sense of Quebec identity separate from English-speaking Canada. And going back to the Parti Québécois, this major political force was founded in 1968 by René Lévesque, and the party's primary goal was to achieve sovereignty for Quebec and it won its first provincial election in 1976, making Lévesque the premier of Quebec. Fast forward to the 1980s, the Parti Québécois led by Premier René Lévesque called the first referendum on sovereignty. The question asked voters if they wanted Quebec to pursue a new partnership with Canada based on sovereignty association. And don't worry, we're going to get into that term in just a second. And despite a vigorous campaign, 59.56% of Quebecers voted no rejecting the proposal. But that referendum question was quite weird. You see, Quebec wasn't really asking for full independence. They were asking for a sovereignty association, which refers to a political proposal wherein Quebec would become an independent state with full sovereignty over its internal affairs while maintaining an economic and political association with Canada. And this was on purpose. You see, the proposal was aimed to preserve certain beneficial ties, such as a shared currency and free trade while allowing Quebec to govern itself independently. But let's get back to our timeline. You see, the 1980 referendum was marked by passionate debate on both sides. The yes side argued that sovereignty would allow Quebec to protect its distinct culture and language while the no side warned of economic uncertainty and the potential breakup of Canada. After the defeat, Lévesque promised to continue working towards greater autonomy for Quebec within Canada. The federal government, led by Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau, the father of Justin Trudeau, responded by negotiating the patriation of the Canadian Constitution, which included the Charter of Rights and Freedom. But all of this without Quebec's consent. Fifteen years later, in 1995, another referendum would be held. This time, the question was much more direct. Should Quebec become an independent country? The campaign was intense, with strong emotions on both sides. The Yes side, led by the Parti Québécois leader Jacques Parizeau, argued that independence was necessary for Quebec to fully control its future. And the results were incredibly close. You see, the no side won by a razor-thin margin of just 1.16%, with 50.58% voting against independence. This narrow defeat was a shock to many and left a lasting impact on Quebec's political landscape. The 1995 referendum campaign saw significant mobilization on both sides. You see, the Yes campaign used a message of empowerment and national identity, while the No campaign emphasized economic stability and unity within Canada. Key figures such as Lucien Bouchard played crucial roles in galvanizing support for the Yes side. And this narrow defeat, which led to a period of reflection and political change in Quebec, Back, brought with it the resignation of then Premier Jacques Parizeau and his successor Lucien Bouchard continued to advocate for Quebec's interests within the Canadian Federation. Following the referendum, we would have the Clarity Act. Passed by the federal government in 2000, it established clear rules for any future referendums on sovereignty. But I've been thinking, what if Quebec had voted yes? You see, many speculate that Quebec's succession could have led to complex negotiations over economic 
economic arrangement, citizenship, and borders. There were concerns about the division of national debt, trade agreements, and the status of indigenous lands within Quebec. Successions could have also inspired other regions with separatist movements around the world, potentially reshaping international relations. The economic impact on both Canada and Quebec would have been profound, with possible disruptions to trade and investments. But let's imagine. Let's imagine a world where Quebec voted yes in the 1995 referendum. The immediate aftermath would have been a period of intense negotiation and political upheaval. Let's take some time and explore the potential consequences of such a historic decision. The first major steps would have been negotiations between Quebec and the rest of Canada. These discussions would have covered critical issues such as division of national debt. You see, Quebec would have to negotiate its share of the national debt which is a pretty contentious issue that could have led to prolonged disputes. Next up would be trade agreements. You see, maintaining economic ties would be essential. Quebec and Canada would need to establish new trade agreements to ensure the continued flows of goods and services. Next up, we'd have border and citizen issues. You see, significant challenges would have been determining the nature of these borders. Movement of people, how would travel and immigration between Quebec and the rest of Canada be managed, as well as dual citizenship. Would Quebecers retain Canadian citizenship, or would they need to choose between the two? The economic implications would have also been substantial. Businesses might have faced uncertainty affecting investment and economic stability as well as deciding whether to adopt the Canadian dollar, create a new currency, or peg to another could have had major economic ramifications. Internationally, Quebec would have sought recognitions as a sovereign state, and this process involves diplomatic recognitions from countries and international bodies like the United Nation, or establishing new trade agreements and diplomatic relations worldwide to keep itself afloat. Long term, Quebec's independence could have led to a re-evaluation of federalism, a shift in how federalism is perceived and practiced in Canada, and possibly inspiring other regions with separatism movements like Alberta. It would also affect the culture and identity politics, a striking sense of Quebec identity and culture influencing both domestic and international perceptions. But what do you think? What's in store for Quebec's independence movement, and what would have happened if they had voted yes in the 1995 referendum? Let us know in the comments down below, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more deep dives into fascinating topics. I'm also trying to reach 2,000 subscribers before the end of the summer, and yes, that's in August, so I do need your help. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you for watching.